All right, welcome everybody, and uh, thank you for uh, coming to the special committee of the whole meeting for Wednesday, February 1st. A um, couple of things, Mayor Hamilton and Councillor Trace are um, away, so that's why they are not here. Aside from stating the obvious, uh, they aren't sick. I, uh, uh, Mayor Hamilton's away on business, and I believe uh, Councillor Trace is uh, away on vacation. So with that, uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, can I have an approval of the agenda? So Second. All, any, any discussion? Uh, there is one small change uh, before I forget. Uh, 2.21 is moving up to uh, 2.16, I guess, uh, 1.5, um, because they wish to make a presentation. That's the only change. Um, with that, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. First item is a 2017 grant and aid summary. Uh, Director of Finance. Thank you very much, Acting Mayor Mr. Logan. Got to work on the new title. No, he's the Acting Mayor. I'm just stepping in. Oh, as the I'm sorry. Vice Chair. Deputy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Logan. I'll keep it simple. So this evening, we're here for our annual grant and aid meeting. And um, don't know if some of you got a copy of the agenda, but there is uh, a grant and aid summary that councillors have in front of them. And the way this works, some of you have been here before, so you're probably familiar with the process. And it's such a good turnout tonight. It must be uh, the entertainment feature for Colwood. <laughs> Sometimes councillors right. get a little worried when we have that much of a turnout because people aren't always happy to be here, you see. So a, a nice positive group here this evening. So basically, just to give you a bit of an idea of what we're going to be doing, we do compile, staff compile a list of all the grant and aid applications. We screen them to make sure that, they're, um, that they actually conform with our grant and aid um, guidelines. And then those that qualify make it onto the list this evening. And uh, we generally are quite oversubscribed in terms of the amount of budget that we have for grant and aid versus what folks ask. So that's what council will be working through this evening in terms of awarding the grants. And um, for example, this evening we've got $113,000 in change requested for grant and aid. And we have a budget of approximately 30,000. I'll turn it over to council here in a minute and they can determine that. And um, so what will happen is council will make a couple <laughs> motions here about the budget and then we will um, invite each one of you forward, those of you who would like to present and there'll be a bit of a question and answer if council needs some further information. After all the presentations are done and stop me Councillor Logan if this is not your plan, what we normally do is then after all the presentations are done then council goes back and basically that's where it gets a lot of fun. They, they vote on how much they're going to give to the different applications. And not everyone gets a grant. That's just kind of the nature of it. We don't have that much money. So I think that's kind of what I was going to cover a bit of the process. So I'll turn it back to you. Excellent. Thank you. So the uh, first order of business then is to decide on the um, cap for our uh, grant and aid. Uh, the Director of Finance is suggesting 30000 which would include... Um, the uh, grant, annual grant that we offer to IACTI. May, uh, may I just make a minor correction? If you go to page two, um, what I wanted to show you there is that um, the amount we had in the budget last year, uh, including the IACTI amount, this is what we forecast with a 2.1% increase. Um, so it's up to council. Like right now, if we take last year's approved grant add about 2% to it, which is what we're using roughly for our budgeting this year for core expense. Um, that gives you a breakdown of 27624 for the total grant and aid and 1200 on top of that for IACTI. And that gives you a total of 28824 That's basically the facts, but it's up to council what you would like to recommend. Thank you. Thank you. So we do have a number before us. Uh, Committee happy with the uh, figure of 28,824, Councillor Dave? Just um, since every other grant was given the roughly 2% increase, the same 
as our core was, I wondered if uh, committee would be willing to do the same for IACTI and maybe give them an extra $100 to go towards the events that they would like to attend. Aren't we addressing that on 2.2.2? 2.22. Uh, IACTI's there, right? So will we not address it at, I'm looking at it right here. Gordon. Yep, you're right. I, I guess uh, what I'm saying is that right now we're setting the, the amount that's in the envelope. So the amount that we would put in the envelope was calculated based on increasing last year's grants by 2%. I'm just wondering why IACTI was left out of that increase for the envelope. Well, I think that was a global envelope that would be applicable to everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I would suggest. Hear, definitely, like if council yeah. agrees on whatever the total money is, then we could add 2% in there, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cause you're right, um, this councilor data, this has been a flat amount for a number of years now. So is the committee happy then with the 28.8 for now? And um, we can always adjust it as well. Yeah. But at the starting point, okay. Yep. Can I have a motion then to uh, set the amount at $28,824? The grant may budget for... So moved. Okay. Any discussion? Jason? Yeah, I honestly think the envelope is too big to start with. Um, we have one way of collecting these monies, and that is property tax, which is an unfair way to collect money from our residents. It's not equally shared. Uh, we have no other financial method of getting these monies other than increasing property taxes. Now, our residents are going to be looking at increased taxes from the school. We're going to be looking at the automatic increase that CRD has every year, uh, plus whatever creep we have in our budget. And uh, then we will also ha be having probably sewage treatment tacked onto that whole mess. So I'm very n nervous about how big our tax increase is going to be this year. Um, I will be voting against this big envelope. Uh, council can, or committee can decide to pass it or not. At any rate, our recommendation goes to the full council when there's all seven of us at the table. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing uh, no further discussion, all those in favor? Opposed? One opposed, it's carried. Uh, first item is 2.2, uh, and I understand we have a presentation from the Colwood Elementary School uh, principal. And so uh, I would uh, invite you up to the uh, microphone, uh, state your name and address, and just to let you know, uh, five minute max. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Frances Kruzakup, and I'm the proud principal of Colwood Elementary School. And with me tonight uh, is Tara Campbell, our PAC president, and Marita Atwood, our PAC treasurer. Um, so thank you for allowing us to submit a grant proposal around inclusive playground equipment. Uh, you see two photos in front of you on the large screen there. One is from a few years ago, and one was just recently taken in this school year. Um, and what we're trying to capture with the photos is that currently our playground equipment does not include um, equipment um, or surfacing that allows children in a wheelchair to use the equipment. So Colwood School, I'm, it's my fifth year at the school, and in those five years we've had up to four students at the school in a wheelchair. And there's a few reasons for this, but one of the reasons is, as you probably know, Colwood is all on one level, and so it makes good sense to have children there who are in a wheelchair. Um, as I mentioned with the photos, we don't currently have the equipment that we need in order for the children to play in the same way as their peers. Um, in talking to parents on our parent advisory committee, what they find with the neighborhood playgrounds is that they require, while some of them do have um, equipment that is for children in a wheelchair, you need to lift them in and out. And so what we're looking to purchase, which you'll see in the next slide, is something called a sway fund, which would allow you to access the playground equipment um, without having to take the student or the child out of the wheelchair. 
As you may also know, our school has a Strong Start Center. It's a drop-in program funded by the Ministry of Education for children who are age zero to five years old. Um, and so the school, though a small school in the Souk School District, um, serves a number of different populations. Our playground is also often used on weekends and um, throughout uh, the summer months. And so we're hopeful that by investing in the playground equipment, you wouldn't just be servicing the Colwood Elementary student population and Strong Start participants, but also the greater community in Colwood and I imagine also in Langford. So this is a sway fun. Um, it may, yes, you have to kind of squint to see it up there. Um, but most importantly, it is accessible, as I mentioned, to a wheelchair you roll on um, using the ramp. And um, then the wheelchair can be on there in much the same way that you can be on there with your peers who are not in a wheelchair. We have been in the process of raising monies for this for about two years. Uh, $38,000 covers the cost of the piece of equipment as well as installation. Installation would be done by the Souk School District Facilities Department. And to date, we have raised approximately $16,000. Um, we are planning right now to um, have the equipment installed this summer. We have some grants already from other places that require us to purchase this year. So. We are hopeful, and I understand you have a limited budget from the conversation that just took place, um, but we have put forward a request for $5,000. Um, again, as you know, I don't need to tell you this, Colwood is a growing community, and we see this as a great opportunity. We have recently, PAC has, um, I thought that was my five minutes. <laughs> I thought the hook was about to get me out of here. <laughs> Um, so we have gone around, uh, our PAC members have gone around to local uh, organizations, faith organizations and businesses to solicit their support. And we have learned that Bronte Heights, uh, the development just across the street from at Souk Road, um, it's my understanding from the developer of that project that they have given monies to the city of Colwood to be used towards um, playground equipment. So that's information that we've just learned recently um, and just ask that you take that into consideration as you're making your decisions tonight. That's great. Yes. Five minutes right on the button, pretty much. Thank you. Uh, committee, do you have any questions um, for the presenters? Jason? Uh, just a brief question. Um, is the school district putting any money into this? It's a, it's a very good question. There are no monies in the Souk School District um, that get put towards playground equipment. So the monies that have been raised are monies that have been raised by PAC um, and then grants and then, as I say, soliciting different organizations. And then the school district is also charging you to do the installation? Correct. Wonderful. Mm. Uh, just a quick aside to somebody on Parks and Rec or to the Director of Finance. How much are we spending on... Uh, accessible playground equipment in Colwood this year. Does anybody know? And to my to my knowledge, we currently don't have anything set aside for accessible playground equipment. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, just thinking. I know we have playground equipment, but I don't think it's accessible playground equipment. Correct. Cynthia. Just I think the water park will be accessible. It'll be. Accessible features, yes, but in, in terms of budget and money set aside, there's nothing th that is specifically um, labeled as accessible. Right. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Most likely. Next presentation is from the Colwood Garden Society. And we have, oh, perfect.
Can you guys see it on your end there? Yeah, you betcha. Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. So hello. Um, thank you for having me here this evening. Um, on behalf of all of Cal Caldwell Garden Society, um, we thank you for your consideration. Uh, so my name is Lauren. I'm the president of the Caldwell Garden Society. Um, and we are just in the middle of a name change, so it is Caldwell Community Garden Society in order to encapsulate the, the meaning of community. Um, so basically why I'm here tonight. Um, we, a few of us community members, have been inspired to start a garden. And I, I know a few of you have probably heard of the garden, and it's been something that's been a work in progress for quite a while. Um, and we're happy to say that this year we, we are finally breaking ground, um, and there's lots of exciting things to come. Um, so the inspiration behind this, there's, I mean, there's, there's many things. Um, and these are just a few of them up here. Um, but our main intent is to create a safe, enjoyable, communal space for members of the Colwood community and the greater West Shore community to come together, learn about growing food, connect to nature, and allow that space for all ages um, to be an engaging environment where we're learning, we're teaching, and we're all growing together. Um, and so this is something that we're all very passionate about. Um, and we have spoken a lot with um, Colwood City Council members, um, as well as the city planners. Um, and so we do have a space outside of Colwood City Hall that we have allotted. Um, it's just over a thousand uh, square feet. Um, and I'm happy to report that um, we are actually adding on to that space as, as of um, a few weeks ago. Um, we have uh, come to a partnership with Wishart Elementary School. Um, and so part of the garden will be a teach garden as well as a community garden. And so we'll, we'll have that space for everybody um, available. So we're really excited about that. Um, so... In collaboration with uh, Wishart Elementary School, we're, we're still working out the kinks of that relationship and what that will look like. Um, but as far as, as we're concerned, um, we're open to supporting each other, um, both promotional and financially. Um, so the PAC has agreed to help us in the construction. Um, and we do have a little bit of help from a few other uh, community supporters in the form of local businesses and organizations. However, it is, it's a community garden and that's, and that's the basis um, of this project. And so the more that we can extend out into the community and the more um, connections we can make, the better. Um, and so that's in the form of Callwood City Hall itself um, other organizations, local businesses, schools, um, and we're hoping that it won't just be Wish Art and that we can bring over Dunsmuir um, students and possibly uh, Sangster as well. Um, and so it'll be really a, a communal space for everybody. Um, so some of the, some of the um, uh, kind of inf incoming and outgoing costs um, are just highlighted up here. Um, so obviously a huge cost for us is insurance. Um, and this is something that the Kawa Garden Society has taken upon um, the society itself to, to cover. Um, and so that covers every member coming into the, to the garden, um, as well as the students that will be coming from uh, Wishart Elementary School to use it as well. Um, obviously, building, building a large fence big enough to keep the deer out and all the small little critters um, is another huge cost. Um, and so that's what we're looking for support in as well. Um, and all the things that come along with building a garden, all the materials, all the, the garden supplies that we need, um, as well as promotional material um, that we can put up around the community um, and in the newspaper. We're hoping to get a table at the Goldstream Farmer's Market so we can um, eventually sell some of the fruits and veggies that we grow. Um, so these are more long-term goals. Um, and then in terms of incoming funds, as I said already, we do have support from the PAC. Um, at Wishart Elementary, so that's fantastic. Um, and we are engaging in a few community fundraisers as well, so we're doing the CD Saturday, um, and we do have uh, support from a few of the other local community um, kind of events that are going on, so the Church of the Advent does their, their Christmas um, community market, so we're there as well. Um, so yeah, slowly getting our name out there. You've just got a couple more seconds. You're sure. approaching five Yeah, minutes. I was just going to say thank you for your consideration and your time.
perfect timing. <laughs> Another one right on the money. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, Rob. Thank you. Uh, can you tell me, so a lot of what your grant was, was capital? you know, to get the fence built, to get the shed built, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, just assuming that you got the entire grant, let's just, for argument's sake, say you did, what do you anticipate your long-term costs would be? Would you be anticipating that you'll be coming back next year on a, for like an annual thing, or like where, where are you at with that? Certainly. So um, as part of our lease agreement that we sign with the city and with uh, Wishart Elementary School, this, this is a long-term project. Um, the only thing that would stop us from this being, uh, you know, a long-term thing would be that we would physically have to move the garden somewhere else, and so that's when we would bring in our termination clause. Um, but the the cost of running a garden, you know, you have maintenance, um, you've got perhaps somebody to to um, walk around and make sure that everything is is kept the way that it should. Water costs, um, and these are these are long-term costs that we that we're looking at. Yep. So, sorry, I guess I'm, uh, the, uh, where I'm going with that is, are you expecting the garden will be self-sustaining? Like, are you planning on charging people to be gardening? Or are you anticipating that you'll be coming back to council every year saying, hey, we need whatever it is, $1,000 to pay for water and, sure. and uh, so on? Sorry, I understand your question now. And, and that is correct. We will be charging a, a plot fee as well as an annual membership fee to, to help with those, with those costs. So this is, um, the grant is basically a, uh, a one-time startup cost is yeah. what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Cynthia? My question is uh, for staff. I was just wondering um, this, if this would qualify for our gas tax uh, funding. Yes, that is quite possible. I would like to dig into that a little bit deeper, but on the face of it, I believe it would. Yeah. Anything else? I've seen none. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Next up is the uh, Dialogue and Resolution Society. Their presentation. Hi, I'm just uh, setting a stopwatch. Oh. <laughs> Um, thank you for very much for having this meeting and for giving these grants and aid. Um, it's a daunting task that you have before you, and I don't envy it. Um, we used to be Communica Dialogue and Resolution Services, and because there was another, there's a company in Vancouver that trademarked the word Communica, we are now DRS. Dialogue and resolution services and it makes sense because that's what we do. We help people have dialogue and resolve their differences um, The two programs that we're hoping to get some funding for one is a new new one to call to to Colwood um, and the other is a, a, a program we've had funding for from Colwood for some time. The new program is the Supported Family Mediation Program, and what that does is it provides funding for families who are going through difficulties in their, in their family, whether it's separation and divorce, whether it's difficulty dealing with an adolescent, whether it's dealing with uh, challenges related to an elder parent, siblings, dealing with their issues as adults, whatever kind of family conflict is going on, we, we uh, work with them and help them deal with it. The supported family part of it is that this is free service that we're offering, up to eight hours of free mediation by qualified and um, insured professionals. It's high quality service and it's free. It's not free to everybody. We're, we're, t we're targeting families that are uh, dealing with severe financial difficulty. Now, you might say, oh, well, people in financial difficulty can go to the Victoria Justice Access Center and get free mediation. And that's true so long as they're dealing with separation and divorce and co-parenting plans. If they have a house that they need to sell or they, if they have debts that they need to solve, the Justice Access Center doesn't deal with that. 
So what happens is that you get families who are financially on the ropes and the stresses involved in that, also dealing with the stresses of family conflict. And you can have a really toxic situation um, that impacts not only the parents, but impacts the kids and the rest of the, the, the extended family as well. So by being able to provide some free service to help them through the difficult issues that they have and to help them create durable solutions, you know, that's a, that's a useful service. When we initiated the service back in 2014, we were just testing it out. Since 2015, uh, of the, it's now 17 supported family mediation cases we've taken on, five of them have been from Colwood. So quite a few families, local families, have been benefiting from this program. Um, and we'd like to be able to uh, have them benefit some more, and we're hoping that Colwood uh, can help us with that. The other program that, that we're looking for funding for is our flagship training program. Uh, it used to be an eight-part, now it's a nine-part series called Communicating Through Conflict. Um, it helps large numbers of people learn the things that we should all have learned in our families about how to deal with conflict constructively, but most of us didn't. And so we go through all of the basic kinds of ways of dealing with conflict in a constructive way. And people who come out of that program are not only if they, if they get the certificate and so on, then they can use that in job resumes and so forth, but just in practice, they're more able to deal with any kinds of conflict issues that arise in their lives. So we're looking for funding there too. And I'll stop there because I've got 33 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, you do. That was great. Thank you very much. Um, questions? No, seeing none. Thank you very much. Next presentation is from uh, Creatively United for the Planet Society. Um, Francis Littman. Good evening, and thank you so much for this opportunity to come before you, and thank you for all the hard work that you do on behalf of our community. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Creatively United to um, tell you more about our association and why we need assistance. We are a group of a collective, in fact, a nonprofit collective that acts altruistically to help everyone in our community in a way that everybody wins. It creates a win-win situation in that we bring together and we showcase local businesses, organizations, institutions, and individuals committed to improving the quality of life in their community. And we do this through an annual sustainability showcase, which was recently held at Royal Bay Secondary. Uh, we have a free community information network, and we now have a new information hub, which is a, a, a portal for everybody can use free of charge, known as This Is Leadership, which you're actually seeing on the screen right now. And this helps us connect, collaborate, create, and celebrate community by showcasing those people that are doing the hero work, from the nonprofits to the local businesses that are doing um, ways to um, inspire other people to up their game, so to speak. So we, we showcase people like the Royal Bay Bakery would be a perfect example of someone we want to show as a leader in the community, taking the initiative on their own time and dime to improve and show what's possible. Uh, we have brought thousands of people together since our inception in 2012. 10,000 people have now attended our annual events. And we brought a ton of people, about 2,000 to Colwood, and gave uh, the students at Royal Bay Secondary um, valuable work experience. We mentored them. We worked closely with the school to have an incredible event here in Colwood. And sadly, we had missed the opportunity to apply for granting because of uh, the deadlines and when we found out we had that uh, arrangement in place. But we also wanted to let you know we've contributed $2,000, more than $2,000 to West Shore Rotary in support of building a new youth homeless shelter in Colwood through our fundraising efforts. And we gave dozens of students, uh, like I say, hands-on opportunities, and we continue to do so and mentor them. 
And so what we're really wanting to have your assistance with is some funding to, to really help the people of Colwood get involved with this free hub. And we've actually partnered with Shaw Cable to, and we'll be producing our first um, community television um, pilot with them sh called This Is Leadership, which is based on this website, which is year-round way for us to highlight and celebrate the people in our communities. We're all doing this as volunteers, um, and so this is a huge labor of love and a huge commitment, which we've proven our dedication to for more than six years now. So we are hoping that we can count on your support um, being that we have already proven to Colwood that we um, have put in good faith the opportunity to bring things to this community. We want to keep doing it through this hub and through our television um, program, which will be starting in April. So thank you so much, and, and thank you again for your support, um, every, anyone and everyone in staff and council that was involved with the festival last year. We know you helped with signage and different things to make it flow. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, open it up to committee. Do you have any questions? Cynthia? I'm just wondering what specifically you'll be spending the money on. Well, th this <laughs> even though that we're all volunteers, we still have to pay a, a webmaster to keep it updated. And that's an everyday uh, occurrence because there's there um, our submissions being like coming in daily. So we have a webmaster, we have web hosting charges, we have licenses, we have a variety of fees. And you know, we also put on this annual sustainability showcase and we have, um, we have the, all the costs and fees and, and insurance associated with that. And Colwood has benefited by that because you've stayed on our website and you're still on our website. Um, it, with our video, which has gone far and wide. We produced a video at our own um, expense, and we had to pay for that as well. So those are the kind of things is to keep the website alive. It's, it's, it does require, I think I produced a budget that you should have there. So basically for web fees. We'd also need to put some money into social media and some advertising to get it out there. We're doing our very level best, but we do need some help. Just a follow-up. Is anyone else supporting you? Um, we've applied for municipal grants, and yes, we got, um, well, we're, we're, we've just applied for the new round, and This Is Leadership has recently just launched. So we've applied, for, we're applying for municipal grants on all levels. So we do have a little bit of sponsorship money, but we don't have enough to cover all our expenses. And we could certainly, if we got all the grants that we've applied for, we'd be in a good position. Otherwise, we're still scrambling. Great, thank you. Thank you Very so much. much. Next up is the uh, Crisis Intervention and Public Information Society of Greater Victoria. Welcome. Good evening, thank you. Uh, my name's Jane Arnott, and uh, I'm representing Manchester tonight. Um, we have got, had support of council for quite a number of years now, and I'll just want to update you on um, our activity for the past year. Um, what we do and what... Could I just get... Perfect, better? thank you. Okay. What we do and what our current focus is, is um, youth suicide prevention. Um, Suicide is still the second leading cause of death among um, young people 15 to 24. Um, it's um, an act that um, impacts communities um, and the ripple effects are felt for quite a long time. It has many and complex causes, um, often linked to things like anxiety, depression, other mental disorders, abuse, trauma, bullying, addictions. Um, but we want, as an organization, to um, ensure that uh, someone is there to reach out to those young people. And um, we have uh, uh, two key strategies. One is in-school programs, and uh, one is online emotional um, and crisis support. In schools this year, um, we have two things that we do. We go into classrooms um, and deliver a suicide awareness 
presentation. When we approach schools, we take a whole school approach. Um, so we're in essence partnering with schools and what they agree to do is to allow us to go into every class in, in one grade cohort. So that basically all the students in the school at some point get that presentation. Um, in uh, the past year, we spoke to 553 students in the West Shore. Um, and uh, in total, we spoke to 3,700 students across the four school districts. Um, we also, in that presentation, it's not just talking um, about suicide, it's also um, speaking to um, aspects of mental wellness, talking about um, stresses, finding some ways to cope with stress. The other thing we do in schools is, this was in response to requests from um, teachers in younger grades where, where these um, issues were bubbling up for them. They wanted us to go in and do the presentations at younger grades. What we did is we developed a um, mindfulness focused program that specifically works with younger grades in a, um, and by younger grades, lower middle school. Um, around giving them specific tools um, to cope with stress and, um, and equip them moving forward for some of the things they're going to encounter, unfortunately. Um, the other piece of work that we, oh, just on the mindfulness, um, we piloted it and then we rolled it out last year and last year we were able to connect with 425 kids. Um, and then the other thing we do is online with Uspace. Uh, we basically offer um, a chat service that's open every night from 6 to 12 um, and uh, engage in, in chats with youth around issues, re most commonly um, mental and emotional health issues, issues about suicide, self-harm, um, but really anything that's going on with them. And last year we had over 85 volunteers involved in doing that and we um, engaged uh, with youth in three, over 3,400 uh, chats. Um, and we're hoping to do the same this year. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I wanted to update you on. And I'm certainly willing to answer any questions you have. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I got to say that everybody's timing has been spot on. Five minutes. <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so I'll open it up to the committee if they have any questions. Yeah, I'll ask oh, Rob. Questions. Thank you. Can you, um, uh, last year I know you got a grant of, it looks like a thousand, and this year you're asking for 1,300. I'm just, uh, the increase based on? Well, um, it's actually going back to what you were funding us before last year. Last year was a bit of a decrease. Um, so, um, uh, or the year before, I'm not, historically, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, just looking for that level of support and um, looking at the level of activity we did have in the West Shore uh, last year, the addition of um, uh, the new high school as well increased um, the demand, um, and uh, it just helps us. The other thing, I mean, we, we leverage the municipal funding we get quite quite a lot because um, we get it from all but, all but one mus municipality, and, and um, it really is a good demonstration of community support and support for youth. Great, thank Great. you. Thank you. Jason? Oh, one okay. more. Uh, one, one further more. question. Um, how large is your staff? We have um, three full-time staff and um, uh, seven part-time staff. So um, I think, and I th if I'm remembering correctly, our FTE is around um, 5.58. Thank you, because I was going through your budget from last year, which is in our big binder and 
of a budget, I believe, of $371,000. $300,000 of that went to salaries and benefits. Is that correct? Um, it was pretty close to that, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, and we also, uh, in terms of volunteer hours, we have over 5,000 volunteer hours a year, but it's direct service. Um, and um, the staff are there. Their primary role is involved in the recruitment, the training, and the support of the volunteers who do the work. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, next one is the uh, Disabled Sailing Association at British Columbia Victoria Branch. Councillors, uh, Acting Mayor, uh, Megan, thank you for your help. Um, my name is Peter Simpson. Uh, I am uh, helping the Disabled Sailing Association with, uh, with um, some fundraising. And uh, we, uh, we provide uh, sailing opportunities to disabled people. And uh, we have 225 uh, registered sailors at this point in time on our, on our um, register, uh, of whom 23 people uh, disabled people live uh, within the Colwood municipality. We're a non-profit organization. Uh, and we provide learn to sail uh, and some racing and uh, other opportunities for disabled people uh, in Esquimalt Harbor. Uh, during 2016, we conducted 639 sails and that's where a sailboat leaves the dock with uh, a disabled person in it. Um, we're graciously hosted by the uh, Canadian Forces Sailing Association at, um, in Esquimalt Harbour. Uh, we keep our small fleet of sailing dinghies there. We have about eight sa little sailboats, three of which, two of which you can see up there now uh, on the screen. And um, the, the disabled population um, f faces barriers to employment um, and, and other, they have very difficult lives, many of them, and we find that when people come out sailing with us, they, they, be, they start to look at themselves as sailors rather than uh, disabled people. Um, you could expect in Colwood that you would have roughly, I think based on the recent census, about 14% of your population are disabled. Um, right now, and that would equate to about 2,136 people within the municipality of Colwood. Um, what we find is that in uh, older uh, communities with older people, for instance, Sydney, uh, up in the, further up the island, uh, they would have about 21% of their population would be disabled. Um, a, a young population like Langford, uh, about 12.8% uh, disabled. Um, we, we provide our dinghies to a, an Easter Seals camp for 125 um, young people up at Shonagan Lake. Uh, each summer, and uh, of all the activities that those young people undertake at that camp, um, they've all said that sailing is their number one uh, opportunity. Um, we, what we would like to do with some funding is to attract more people in Colwood to our sport to, to, uh, and give them the opportunity to come out sailing with us. Um, we subsidize people very heavily, and what we find we just cannot keep up with demand. Uh, people, disabled persons, turn up at our dock uh, in, uh, in Esquimalt and they um, would like to go out sailing and unfortunately we just don't have the uh, opportunity just through the sheer demand. Some of those people are financially disadvantaged as well. You can understand that employment is very, very tough for those people and they, many of them are underemployed or not employed at all and We've been charging a $15 fee per sale, and some of them come to us and say, look, I can't pay this $15, um, you know, and then what we'd like to look at then is having an adopt a sailor program where a, a contribution from, say, Colwood would go towards subsidizing those people. We call it an adopt a sailor. Um, the, you can see up, up there now, uh, those are called Martin 16s. We have three of these little sailboats. 
and I'm hoping that I click on the right button here now. Uh, perhaps I'll just go here. And, uh, and here's this little group of, uh, oh, click on the wrong thing. Here's a group there of, uh, with a disabled fellow and a couple of our young uh, instructors sitting, sitting at the dock. And uh, uh, they're sitting in the cockpit of one of our Martin 16s. Those boats, by the way, uh, with sip and puff, uh, which is the um, breathing technology that enables a disabled person to sail, one of these little sailboats, they have a couple of tubes that they can sip and puff and, and either blow or, or, or sip or puff and they then can steer the boat, what a small sailing dinghy. Um, the, um, it's a wonderful uh, situation for people I've seen in the last year. I've been involved with them for the last year, and I've seen people who were suicidal, many of them, come out with us and go sailing, and we've been able to change many of their lives. What I'd like to do is to just conclude uh, with a, and there's one of our fellows there uh, who's a very, very good sailor, um, his, uh, many their, their senses become really quite highly aware, um, heightened because of the fact that they are disabled. And he is now using that tube you can see there is, um, is sip and puff. It's connected to a computer and to this device there. And he can then sail that boat. This uh, little dinghy was uh, given by a McDonald's um, several years ago. And uh, it's in badly need of repair. And we're in the process right now of uh, repairing it. And... Uh, and he is there, Trevor is there with, uh, with an instructor. So all of our disabled people go out uh, with an instructor as well. So what I'd like to conclude with is a, just a very, very short video. It's we're actually, uh, Peter, I'm sorry, we're, we're actually over. Are we are? Um, okay. We are, yeah. I have no concept of time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any I, I apologize. No problem. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions uh, that I could, yeah. could help you with? Uh, Jason. Uh, looks fabulous. Uh, I used to do a lot of sailing myself. I actually taught uh, sailing in laser ones and laser twos. Did you? Looking, mm -hmm. uh, I might just be one of your volunteers. What kind of uh, qualifications would I need to be an instructor or a companion? You sound like you've got the absolute right qualifications. You've been sailing. So uh, we have a short uh, training program we would do, and we would love to, uh, if you'd like to be a companion sailor, we would love to have you along. Thank you. I think this is a really deserving of our support. I don't think we can get this from Juan de Fuca or any of the other rec centers and with the DND providing space and so forth, it's a, a really fabulous opportunity for Colwood. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Rob? Thank you. Um, so I, I appreciate the dollar amount, so I can understand. Um, I, I like it when you break it down and you say each sale cost is approximately $105. Um, so your, the grant you're talking about, though, is going to be used to subsidize the $15 portion of it? That's it? Is that, is that what you're anticipating, that that's, or is it just going into general operations? No, or? not at all, Councillor. Okay. It's for two things. We would like to attract more disabling, uh, disabled people from Colwood. Right. Uh, we think that there's at least 2,100 disabled people uh, in Colwood right now. And we have 23 on our registers, so we feel that we could make this opportunity available through local advertising uh, and making um, uh, ourselves known to, to people in Colwood. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much for that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next one is a presentation from Gap Publishing Group. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. My name is Anne Marie Morrow. I'm um, the publisher for the uh, publishing 
uh, for the uh, GAP Publishing Group. Uh, and I'm here on behalf of the GAP team to request $5,000 of grant and aid funding to support a portion of the Go West Shore project initiative. The funding would be specifically directed toward the development of a City of Colwood custom map feature inset, along with the development of your own online directory profile listing. I'll give more details about that shortly. Let me... Oh. I'd like to give a brief overview of what the project's about. Um, Go West Shore is a printed concierge map. It's a very large map, double-sided, and it is to, it's an initiative to develop economic development in the West Shore. It's accompanied by a mobile accessible online directory so that uh, people, uh, amenities and services and organizations can become more visible on the West Shore. I think many of the people who were presenting here today, we provide free access to the directory. The entire project, of course, will be funded by advertising and by the GAP partners. But we are hoping in the future that it will, be, it will create a sustainable community building platform, not just for the West Shore, but for anybody who comes to visit or anywhere. It's hard to believe, but the West Shore does not exist on a concierge map currently in the capital region. We were very surprised to see that. It stops somewhere around Bay Street. Without that kind of representation, how can we, how can we be prepared to maximize opportunities and sustain any kind of prosperity without recognition and awareness? we decided that we were going to fill the gap. And it, believe me, we didn't name ourselves Gap because of that. <laughs> but isn't it time to give our amazing West Shore its own map? There is so much to do here. I've been living here 11 years, and just developing this project has brought me into contact with things I didn't even know were here. The main focus first and foremost is to address new and local residents that are currently coming to live here. Giving them a way, a platform from which they can participate more fully in the community on the West Shore. Of course we want to bring more tourists here. They spend a lot of money, they create a lot of jobs. and. Um, but the, uh, we think that the Go West Shore project would in, no doubt entice a lot of them, give them a reason to come. Right now they don't see us, they don't know where we are, or they don't even know what there is to do up here. Here's the one that's of particular interest to us. With the right exposure, we think that the, the Go West Shore initiative can entice investment to the West Shore. And by that, I don't just mean that we just get people investing here and then they move away. I'm talking about bringing businesses here that will create some quality jobs so that people who live here can work here. And I mean, I'm from Toronto. I'm used to traveling hours. But we don't need to do that here. But we do need to attract business here, quality businesses. I wanted you to know also that everybody involved in this project, there are pe four people working full-time on this. All of us live and work in the West Shore. We made that an essential component. So we have an vested interest in making sure this succeeds, not just this year, but for many years to come. We're very passionate about it. Not as passionate as I'd like to be, only five minutes, but nevertheless, I want you to know I'm, we're all committed. And that's the aim, by increasing the collaborative models that are affordable in this project. We will have an exclusive project, 
a platform, a collaborative platform that can sustain prosperity for our, our West Shore. That's great. Thank you, Anne-Marie. That was just over the five minutes, but thank you. Perfect. I, uh, <laughs> I know it's, uh, yeah, we got it. Yeah. So I will open it up to the uh, committee. Any questions? Oh, Rob. Have you, um, had you, ha have you had discussions with our communications uh, person, Sandra Russell? Yes. Y and what did Sandra say? Do you know? Well, she was the one who did she, she recommend the grant part? Okay. And uh, what, what conversations have you had with West Shore Chamber and the uh, yeah. South Island Prosperity Group? South Island Prosperity is the, uh, the coalition group of all the greater Victoria municipalities that are doing oh, an I economic have development? No. I have you had any I conversation with them? Uh, okay. The, the person who does our business development is doing the village business. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly what that is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia. So the $5,000 would go towards directing, um, creating the map and your uh, yeah, app? Yeah, I'm sorry. that I didn't quite get to that point, which was it's, it's specific would impact on the back side of this map. Okay. So how many maps will be produced? 150,000 are going to be distributed. Okay. Um, very high volume. And we've got a distribution network that's going to help us to do that. 90% of this project, as I said, is being funded by the advertisers, but we will also be hoping that See, these concierge maps will, will come in pad right. 100, right? right? We're giving those out free to all of our networks and uh, so that they can distribute them throughout the areas, all the hotels, downtown, tourist centers, information centers, and such. Great, thank you. And just for the committee's um, information, I looked up what the uh, eligible project categories are in the latest gas tax agreement. Mm. And uh, they do include, of course, everything related to active transportation, infrastructure, wastewater, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they also include uh, culture, tourism, sport and recreation infrastructure. So just FYI. That's, uh, that's good background. Thank you for that, Cynthia. Gives us some Potential wiggle room, perfect. Uh, any further uh, questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next one is uh, Green Teams of Canada, Greater Victoria Green Team. Oh, I'm sorry, Greater Victoria Bike to Work uh, Society, I'm sorry. <laughs> so that was, that was just a bit of a teaser to get you <laughs> over the nerves. That's my apologies. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman Logan, Acting Mayor No, and Council. Uh, my name is Amelia. I'm the Executive Director of the Greater Victoria Bike to Work Society. Uh, first, thank you for the opportunity to be here today to submit an application and to present for you. A um, little bit of background. The Greater Victoria Bike to Work Society is a registered nonprofit society. We have a membership of about 112, which has grown this year again, and about 700 volunteers. Um, since 1995, um, the Greater Victoria Bike to Work Society has been working to increase the number of commuter cyclists in Greater Victoria through two main program streams, um, events and education. 
So our organization's mandate is to promote the bicycle as a viable commuting choice. And as I mentioned, through two main program streams. The first one are celebration events. So that includes Bike to Work Week, with which a lot of people are familiar with. It's a free celebration event that invites people to try commuting by bike in a fun and inclusive atmosphere. So starting with team building in the workplace and then encouraging visits to celebration stations, uh, Bike to Work Week builds a supportive community for, pe for people using bicycles as transportation. And since its inception, Bike to Work Week has celebrated with over 100,000 cyclists and in introduced more than 13,000 new cyclists to commuter cycling. So to complement that program stream and to further support people who choose cycling, we also um, coordinate bike skills and safety courses to give the people the knowledge, skills, and confidence they need to safely use active transportation. So together, those two program streams are part of a larger behavior change campaign designed to transition people into regular bike commuters. So our programs together improve the quality of life for Colwood residents and for the greater Victoria community as a whole by supporting active, healthy lifestyle choices and building a safe and courteous transportation environment. So our goal in supporting people to choose cycling is to help build healthier, healthier happier, more vibrant communities. So in 2016, with the support of all 13 municipalities, we had a successful and exciting campaign last year. We attracted over 6,500 participants, um, and together, everyone um, burned a, approximately 8 million calories, averted over 71,000 kilograms of equivalent greenhouse gas emissions, and cycled over 260,000 kilometers. <laughs> so some of the benefits of that for the city of Colwood and its residents includes reduced congestion during peak commuting hours, which is a big one that affects the West Shore, um, increased use of act active transport, active transport travel infrastructure, improved air quality, as I mentioned, the greenhouse gas emission aversion, improved health, and contributing to healthier and more productive employees. So in 2017, um, our plan is to, or through our marketing and outreach efforts, our plan is to attract about 8,000 people and have about 6,500 celebration station visits. And in this campaign, we're planning five celebration stations on the West Shore. Um, and one of those being the Atkins Park and Ride. So what we're really gonna try and feature this year, which we did in Bike to Work Fall Days last year, was to kind of present Park and Ride as a viable option for people that aren't comfortable um, biking such a long distance because it can be a little bit tricky for someone that's new to it. And so we're asking for the City of Colwood's support to offset the cost of organizing these five celebration stations that benefit residents on the, in Colwood as well as producing and distributing team leader kits, providing free workplace workshops, and offering support and resources for people wanting to try commuting by bike. And supporting Bike to Work Week helps the City of Colwood to realize its commitment to an inclusive transportation plan, environmental care, and community well-being, as outlined in your 2020 vision. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, to me? Anything from the cyclist? Yes, we go to Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I promise it is the green team's turn. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having me tonight. My name is Amanda with the Greater Victoria, uh, I'm the program manager of the Greater Victoria Green Team. You might be a little bit familiar with us. A little bit of history. We are uh, the first and only regional-wide environmental volunteer group in the CRD. Uh, we are following in the footsteps of the Lower Mainland Green Team, which started six years ago, um, and the volunteer model that has been uh, built over in the Lower Mainland Green uh, team, we, we applied it here in, in Greater Victoria, starting in August 2014, 
And since then, it's been a hugely successful way of engaging people in outdoor hands-on activities to improve the health of our environment. Um, so much so that uh, the success of the Lower Mainland Green Team really spurred the creation of Green Teams of Canada charity. And Victoria is really just only the second city in hopefully more cities for us to expand this volunteer model. We are not just an invasive plant group. So there are amazing stewardship groups who are focused on the restoration project, looking for volunteers for that project. We are all about the people. So we recruit volunteers and we inspire people to get outside and we collaborate with municipalities and restoration projects who are needing people to fulfill their um, goals. Some of the activities we do do, a lot of it is invasive plant removal. We are sort of told what to do, um, and uh, that includes invasive plant removing, planting native species, uh, cleaning up the shoreline. This is us at Cobourg Peninsula. We were with the uh, Squamalt Lagoon Stewardship Initiative just this past summer. And we also engage in a lot of unique activities, building a fence on Discovery Island, for instance. Uh, we're quite a unique and innovative program. Uh, one thing that really this picture um, encapsulates is the, the age of our volunteers. It's quite uh, a unique age to see people uh, engaging in environmental stewardship activities. A lot of times we find there um, older people with a lot of time or girl guides and scouts who really need to get out there. So we've really tapped into this new demographic of volunteers and this picture is really great that showcases that. We engage um, schools during weekday act, uh, time during their curriculum. So we work with teachers and we uh, organize activities around their curriculum, uh, getting kids outside in nature and making it really easy for teachers to do that. We, uh, our, our turnout, uh, volunteer turnouts are quite large. We have an average of 15 volunteers that come out for each activity. And our overall program has over 1,500 volunteers now. And a lot of these volunteers live right in the West Shore. We use social media to um, connect with volunteers and people um, that use the internet. We're on meetup.com. And we're all about collaboration. So we collaborate with over 44 different groups and municipalities, including some right here in the West Shore in Colwoods. Uh, here's a before and after photo of the Pitt House Park day that we had uh, last year. So we take a lot of photos to showcase the impact that we're making. And th these are just a few impacts we've ha had in Colwood so far. 13 activities, uh, four of them have been youth focused in seven parks. We've engaged 388 volunteers um, and 869 volunteer hours have been accumulated. And we're introducing people to activities they might not, not have ever done and parks that they might not have ever been to. So we're bringing people to a lot of places that they're learning about through us. Uh, we've connected with two schools here in Colwood, Dunn Senior School and John Stubbs. And I've and, uh, planted lots of trees and shrubs and flowers, restored habitat, removed a lot of invasive plants, and garbage, 100, over 100 pounds of garbage from your shorelines. We've been in the news quite a bit, so before and after every activity, we um, contact the media and we're really trying to put yeah. Yeah, you might hmm. recognize somebody in this picture. <laughs> this was one of our very first activities, uh, uh, October 2013. And yeah, it was amazing front, front page news. Uh, we can't, we um, uh, coordinate and collaborate with uh, really awesome groups like the Habitat Ac Acquisition Trust, which, um, so we're boosting capacity with what's already on the ground. And so by funding our program, you have a lot of benefits in exchange. Uh, more opportunities for Colwood citizens, increased public education around disturbances in your parks. Um, we provide additional capacity for park staff. So I, um, uh, Gordon, yep. maybe, yeah. So we, we, you know, he sort of lines up what needs to happen and we can fulfill official community plan objectives, park plan objectives. Um, and you can send a strong message to thousands of, vol to thousands of volunteers that this is important to you. Uh, lots of media exposure, uh, and we um, and volunteer time, um, and we do provide refreshments, gifts, vol uh, and volunteer insurance as well. Great. So we're um, and that is it. Just over perfect. So six activities, 
and, um, and the, the funding will help cover partial costs. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Uh, questions? Oh, seeing oh, none. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And next is uh, Habitat Acquisition Trust. Good evening, Collwood City Councilors. Thank you so much for taking the time to consider our application today. Um, my name is Alana Nasadic. I'm the Community and Development Coordinator with the Habitat Acquisition Trust. Um, HAT is what we call ourselves for short. And uh, we are applying for a grant of $2,500. Uh, for our work with Havenwood Park towards the planning and execution of two habitat restoration days uh, in 2017. These events will engage 40 or so volunteers per event in the maintenance of the environmental integrity of the park, Havenwood Park, uh, and the removal of invasive plants, um, as well as the maintenance of newly planted species uh, that we put in last year. Uh, as well as the study of the natural environment. And we'll be doing uh, photo points to monitor the restoration so we can compare over the coming years uh, the progress there. And um, we'll also be engaging the volunteers in plant ID training. Uh, so it's an additional added bonus for people in terms of learning about uh, the environment that they're working with there. Um, just a little background. HAT has been working with the city of Colwood since 2008 to protect this community space. Um, and we are glad to be a covenant holder uh, in collaboration with you. And um, we've been engaging the community in stewardship of this space. Uh, we've been working with Gord Beauvillier of Colwood Parks to dispose of the weeds once we've removed them through projects um, and to coordinate the care of recently planted trees. Um, in 2016, HAT and the Friends of Havenwood Park, uh, a stewardship group spurred by HAT, uh, of local residents who have been helping to maintain the park in between these events. Um, we teamed up with the first grad class of Royal Bay Secondary mm -hmm. um, to plant trees in commemoration of their first grad year. Uh, we are, we've also worked with the Greater Victoria Green team and Amanda, who just presented. Um, and last year in June, we brought 33 volunteers for a restoration day. Uh, we, we removed 10 cubic meters of invasives. Um, that's quite a lot. If you've never seen the piles, <laughs> it's quite nice mm -hmm. to see them out of the ground. And um, we also engaged in trail building, as well as mulching the trees uh, so that they would uh, be able to flourish throughout the winter. Um, we hope to continue these community building partnerships and preserving the biodiversity of Havenwood um, with the requested funds. Um, thriving green space is it's the cornerstone of a healthy community, and so that's why we want to bring this forward to the Colwood Council. Uh, how am I for time? Oh, you're like halfway there. You're doing I'm halfway that. there. All yep, right, great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just had a few extra points. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Havenwood Park, uh, it features sensitive riparian habitat, so creeks and streams, as well as uh, Gary Oak rocky outcrops, uh, which are considered an endangered ecosystem, and wetland ecosystems as well. It's 16.5 uh, hectares, and um, one interesting species that can be found there is the rare Properteus dusky wing butterfly associated with the rare Gary Oak ecosystems. Um, and I also wanted to mention that in Colwood's 2020 vision, uh, environmental care and enhancement of the parks is outlined as one of the core goals. Um, so through these projects, we'd like to assist in making those goals come to fruition. Um, and there are also plans for an urban forest strategy, and Havenwood is an excellent example of a thriving urban forest uh, that we'd like to keep going throughout uh, the many years to come. Thank you so much. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, committee? Yep. That's excellent. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much for your time. Uh, next one is uh, Stigma Free Society. Welcome. Good evening, Council. My name is Gurpreet Randawa, and I am the secretary of the Bipolar, or sorry, Stigma Free Society, formerly known as the Bipolar Disorder Society of British Columbia. Mm. Andrea Pocat, our executive director, sends her regards, but I'm very pleased to be here on her behalf. I joined the society in 2010 when it received charitable status, as mental illness is something that I'm very passionate about. 
I have a close family member who suffers from depression and anxiety who did not feel comfortable asking anyone, including our family, for help due to, in her view, the stigma associated with mental illness. It wasn't until this individual suffered from a mental breakdown and was forced to seek medical assistance that my family and I finally became aware of this issue. This experience prompted me to become more involved in organizations that educate and advocate for those impacted by mental illness. The society changed its name to the Stigma Free Society in August of 2016 to expand its mandate and include conversation around all stigmas such as racism, sexism, developmental disabilities, and gender identity with a focus on mental illness. The society seeks the support of the city of Colwood for our Stigma Free Zone superheroes classroom and community presentations that promote awareness, understanding, and acceptance of ourselves and others. Our support groups that have been serving your residents since 2010 and our West Shore facilitated support groups for those dealing with mental illness have traditionally included 30% or more residents from Colwood. Our programs help individuals to manage their mental, personal mental illness by connecting them to community mental health resources. In the past 12 months, the society has been actively involved in the Colwood community by delivering me, by delivering our stigma stomp programs to schools in your area. The society offered seven stigma stomp classroom presentations to 230 students at Dunsmuir Middle School um, and Royal Bay Secondary School. Sorry, in 200, and as well, to, uh, Andrea, the executive director, also gave a presentation at the Royal Bay Secondary School's mental health fair, um, which included 250 students. The Society also previously has given presentations to John Stubbs Middle School and Pacific Secondary School and will engage these schools again in 2017. We do not cur and I'd like to make note that we do not currently receive any funding from the Ministry of Health or Education uh, as we rely on local grants um, from municipalities such as the City of Colwood. To conclude, I'd just like to share one quote that a grade 12 student shared. He said, because of our classroom presentations, he feels less nervous about meeting his biological father who has bipolar disorder. Another young, ma young man sought help for psychosis that he was experiencing since grade three, and due to the education of our program, he received the help that he needed through his school counselor. We are changing lives every day, and we feel that no matter what our challenges are, we should all leave, lead extraordinary lives. Thank you. Great. Thank you, and uh, thank you very much for illuminating the uh, change in name as well. Thank you. Great. Uh, committee? I see none. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up is uh, the West Shore Arts Council. Hello. Hi there. Um, first off, before my time starts, can I just make a comment that... Um, on the spreadsheet, oh, and this is Gail Nash and Mar Eagle, and Bert Davis, um, who's from Four Seasons Musical Theatre from uh, to of our Arts Council. Okay. I just want to make a comment that on the spreadsheet it says that we are building a performing arts center. We are not. I, I'm not sure how that got in there. And also David Stock's letter was in the front of our application, and he's on a different society of the, of the chair. So. Just want to make sure that we didn't have that confusion going on. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for clarifying that. So last November, I came and spoke to you folks about um, what the Arts Council's been up to for the last two years and went over a lot of information. I just look, 
to kind of recap that mm -hmm. uh, with respect to our grant because we are uh, asking that you consider us as part of your budget, as a line item on in your budget, uh, instead of a, us coming back every year to get a grant made when we're actually <coughs> performing part of your OCP, is what we feel. Um, so our mission, of course, is to enrich communities um, and foster and promote uh, participation in arts, culture, and heritage. So that's really what we're trying to achieve for all five of the Western communities. Um, so we assist uh, developing programs, projects, and events uh, for visual, uh, literature, and heritage. And we promote uh, public understanding and try to you know, engage with uh, the public as far as what the significance of the arts is. Um, the Arts Council has been around for 28 years, 29 this year, and, and so next year will be our 30th uh, anniversary. We're a not-for-profit organization. Um, so we also assist local governments besides yours, um, providing the, uh, the mandate of the OCP for the arts. Um, some of the things we do in Colwood, paint in. Uh, this year we're hoping to bring our plein air painters back. It is a go for the Royal Road to paint in again. Um, we also do the student art show. We'll have, uh, with the Coast Collective, we fund, out of your funding and Langford's, we fund almost half of those shows. Um, then we do Canada Day, and we're there to provide, uh, it's a whole volunteer-based um, art activity for kids. Other key things, we have concerts here. Um, actually, we're trying to get a couple concerts in the Teach Mitsa Theater, we find that we can't do that till June. We can't book. So it's very hard for high-end entertainers like Ken Levine, where you need to contract a year in the head. So we're working on those things with them to try to make it happen. We are partnering with, uh, as you know, Marcy Lalonde for the Canada 150 Art Tree Project, which is up and running now. Um, support for Chamber of Commerce events. We would like to have bursaries back at Royal Bay. I have that in the grant application. Um, we would also this year uh, like to have an opportunity to work with you guys on Eats and Beats. Um, so full funding for that and also British Columbia Arts Council funding could be used to assist with that. Um, Coast Collective Arts Center, we've been working diligently with them over the last three months. They're, they're struggling and the Arts Council has stepped in to provide um, policy, um, different financial assistance and looking for grants, helping them write grants making decisions, that sort of thing. So we're working alongside them to see that those doors stay open. Uh, the Dunsmere element uh, documentary is a documentary the Royal Roads has created, and we're going to try to bring that um, to, uh, to the Colwood area and have sort of a, an event with the community to come out and see that documentary. It's an excellent documentary. Um, let's see. So we would really like to see us have a five-year agreement. We've been able to establish this with Langford. I'm working with the other municipalities as well. And the first year, we would like to see a starting point at 5,000. Uh, Ten-year, 10 10% increases is what we would suggest. Uh, this is really uh, minimal funding to keep us going for as the communities start to grow. Um, then we could set some of the programming for Colwood, and we could keep that moving forward, which always becomes an easier and less expensive once an event is established. Uh, planning and administration, yes, we could keep that uh, you know, sustainable so that we can actually have a part-time person in our world so that it isn't completely volunteer and the president doesn't have to be the CEO and the secretary, et cetera. <laughs> so, but this is just to show you what the funding looks like this year. So as you can see, British Columbia Arts Council, and actually they just gave us a grant as of yes yesterday I got information and re received additional funding for performance on the West Shore. Um, not much, but uh, some performance money. And so the city of Langford has really stepped forward and we'd like to see the city of Colwood step forward as well and um, consider the arts and the arts council as your advocate for the arts on the West Shore. That's really what we're doing. Um, so that gives you an idea of the funding. And this is the ask. So the ask really is uh, community outreach. Uh, we have a West Shore studio tour which went on years ago that we'd like to resurrect. So each municipality is going to hopefully pay into that a portion. 
uh, the Children's Art Show, as you see there, that would be part of the funding along with Langford for those shows and the Youth Arts Bursary. So that's really the context of what we're going to spend the money on for this upcoming year. That's great. Oh, hey. I have oh. one more picture. This is our oh. board. I thought you might like to have the board. picture. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Any questions? Committee? Yeah, sorry. Robert. So uh, it looks to me as though I'm just trying to do some quick math. Uh, so it looks like you're getting about a twelve to fifteen thousand dollar grant from Langford. Actually, it's sixteen thousand, and 16, it's quite possibly going to be twenty-five. Okay. So, so can soon. can you tell me uh, what what is Langford seeing? What are you doing for Langford uh, that they're envisioning that that there's that much value that they're getting, like twenty-five? So, for example, you're saying twenty-five thousand. So I, I, I understand the three things you sort of yeah. presented today that's going on in Colwood. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to understand what is what is Langford, what do you, what are you doing that's that sure. I'm missing that you guys are doing in the West Shore? Okay, we're doing youth at risk band, which is I'm sorry, youth at risk band, which youth is at risk band. Yes. Okay. Band like yeah. like music. Music. <laughs> music. Got it. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah. we've got one one band started up. There's a second one starting up, and so they assist in funding with that. There is special project money as well. We're going to do an art recycle project at the West Shore Mall, which would be rather large uh, recyclable installations, and we're um, putting money forward for that. Um, we're going to be doing some speaker series. We have concerts um, when we can in, in venues. The West Shore Co Community Concert Band is one of the um, uh, bands that we host, and um, we give out grants also to not-for-profit organizations. Some are on Artman and Langford. Uh, we did the Matola Family Art Project, two sessions with them uh, in Langford, and with the whole neighborhood coming together. And the uh, biggest one is the Lantern Festival as of last year, and that will be uh, larger this year. Um, they're quite excited about that. And then the other part is just really working with those organizations that are in Langford. Um, Four Seasons Musical does a lot of presentations there as well, and Lighthouse Dance, and... Um, and the Sukeville is actually sort of in Langford and here as well. So we're supporting all those organizations. So it's quite a bit. Can I just do a quick follow-up, please? Absolutely. Thank you. So I, I again, uh, sorry, and I mis may be misinterpreting what you're saying, and that's why I'm just asking for a clarification. Sure. So is some of the money just a flow-through? Like, is it going to you and then it's going to Four Seasons? Like, is the money, there like, when you talk about no. that you're doing bursaries no. or grants and, yeah. and these type of things, I'm, I'm just trying to understand... Sure. So the grants and aid come from British Columbia Arts Council specifically. So that money goes to those organizations. Yeah. There's no mun municipal money. Most of the municipal money, as you can see, as I showed you for you, it's earmarked. Yeah. Uh, there is some crossover with, the, you know, doing the advertising, the paper, the marketing, that kind of thing, and paying part for salaries uh, for a part-time person out of all five municipalities. Um, but yeah, so okay. No, and I, I just w I, I just wanted to clarify that I was yeah. hearing something. I just want to make sure I wasn't hearing what I yeah, thought I was hearing. Yeah, we actually break everything out so you can see what events yeah. are where, and it's quite difficult with five communities. We try to do the best we can to keep track of everything. Yeah. Thank you. So you bet. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Nope. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we have two more presentations tonight. Uh, next one is a, uh, the one from the Youth for Christ Victoria. Welcome. Hi, right, thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, my name is Lindsay Hodges. I'm the Executive Director with Youth for Christ in Victoria. Our offices have just moved out here recently into uh, Colwood, just out in Hatley Clark Plaza over there. Uh, we... I'm excited to be here tonight, and I want to say thanks for the opportunity to be here as well, because you guys have really actually made this applicable for us. Um, we have been working out here for the last couple of years, uh, and primarily with some of the West Shore schools, uh, and we've been doing some different other youth, youth work within the greater Victoria region for the past 30 years. Uh, but since I've been here in the last three years, we've been able to kind of rejig where we're at and what we're doing and how we're making some of our impact with the youth in our community. Um, <clears throat> the three schools that we're working with in the West Shore, or pardon me, the four schools that are working within the school district are Dunsmuir, 
middle school where we get to do a Futbolito Club at lunch, which is a youth mentorship program through sports for boys in particular. They wanted us to have a strong uh, male role model influence for the boys during lunch because boys can be a little bit active and get away on everybody. Uh, so we run a program like that with them. We run a breakfast program over at Spencer Middle School as well, five days a week. Uh, we're also working with the Youth for Change group at the Royal Bay High School, uh, helping them with their uh, social justice and activity group there. Uh, but we're also in uh, Journey Middle School, and we've got a couple of programs that are coming up this, uh, this semester with those, a couple of schools teaching a strengths-based program uh, within the school time, actually, with those guys. So we're excited to be uh, in the West Shore. We're excited to be in the schools and working with you, with our staff and our volunteers. Uh, what we are planning on doing here in the next few months is bringing an organization called Legacy One. Uh, Legacy One is a hip-hop, dance, and spoken word group. They do assembly-style presentations for uh, high schools and uh, junior highs or middle schools. A uh, program that they're doing is called 1,000 Voices, where the idea behind it is to uh, sift, encourage kids to be able to sift through all the different voices of media and culture and peers uh, to figure out what, what is true, but also to be able to find their own voice in the middle of that and stand up for what they believe is right, uh, how they need to influence their friends and their peers instead of being influenced maybe in a negative manner. Uh, they're going to plan on being here for about five days. <clears throat> uh, that's our idea is to bring them in for five days and do as many assembly-style presentations in the area as we can with this group. Uh, they, they, I used to be one of the administrative overseers of the group. They're out of Calgary and uh, back in my former life. Uh, I was able to work with those guys. And some of the stories that come out of their presentations and the influence that they have with the students has been phenomenal. So that's why we feel it's an important thing to have them come out here and be a part of things with us. Uh, just for that period of time. Uh, some of the things that they have said, like with the things that we have found uh, coming out of those presentations, they had actually a couple of great stories just recently of a kid who had dropped out of school completely and had come and saw, seen one of their presentations at a community event that they did. And the result of that was that he decided to go back to school. He went back in. Uh, this was a couple of years ago. He went back to school. He graduated. He went to Mount Royal College. He got his heavy-duty mechanics, and he's actually got a job now working full-time with that, uh, which we were pretty excited about. One of the other girls that just contacted him recently said that she had uh, changed the course of where she was going with her life and decided to become a nurse because she wanted to be in an environment that helped people rather than just one that looked after herself, and she has uh, just finished school as well uh, in getting her RN and is uh, working back in Alberta as well at this point. So we know that their program and their, the way that they bring their message across is one that makes a big influence in kids' lives because they love the arts, they love the dance, they love the videos, they love the spoken word thing. And a couple of years ago, we had this group in. We were only able to work in one school, which was the Spencer Middle School. And Terry Honer, who was the principal there, mentioned to me afterwards, he said, uh, this is one of the most impacting things I've seen. I've never seen my kids so engaged in any assembly presentation that we've done here. And uh, Terry brings in a lot of high-profile guys, uh, so it was exciting for us to be able to bring them in. So the idea behind uh, asking for a grant here is just that we would be able to uh, offset some of the costs in bringing those guys in. They have charges that they like to, uh, to give for each assembly presentation, and uh, the more that we can offset with the costs of having them here for the week, the more kids we're able to put them in front of, and the more influence that they'll have. For us, it's a great partnership because uh, we still are able to uh, use our staff and our volunteers as the connection points for our different groups, and it just enables our, our voice to be that much stronger as well with them, along with what the teachers are already doing in the schools, along with the administrators and the counselors and the rest of us that are just trying to get kids over, uh, over the hump for some of them. So that's where we're at, and that's why we put our application in. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. I will uh, open it up to Cynthia. Thanks. I'm yeah. just wondering uh, if you're aware of also we, uh, every year the mobile youth services team brings over the Children of the Street Society oh. and uh, they do the TCO Squared presentations in schools as well, uh, which is taking care of ourselves, taking care of others. So it sounds like it might be complementary to the program that you're offering. Uh, the mobile youth services team yeah. is paid jointly through the CRD. So uh, it just sounds a lot like you we're kind of hitting the same problem, but maybe from sure. slightly different directions, which 
I think is great because what might appeal to one group of kids might not appeal to another. Well, it's it's the extra voices, like mm -hmm. we always find, like the augmentation of that message that's coming already from teachers. Then they hear it from somebody that's close to their own age. Then they hear it from someone that looks like a hero. <laughs> and then, you know, that extra voice, everyone's, that is the thing that we want to continue to bring from different angles. So, and just wondering, your organization, do you have some sort of oversight for your, for your organization or any accreditation? Uh, for Youth for Christ yes. itself? Youth for Christ Victoria is part of Youth for Christ Canada. It's, uh, uh, we are our own charity, but as Youth for Christ Victoria is its own charitable organization here in town. So I do have a board uh, that's local here. But we are also a part of Youth for Christ Canada, which is part of Youth for Christ International. We have 25,000 staff and volunteers across the world. We're in 117 countries. Uh, we've got 750 staff across Canada as well. So uh, we're just a portion of that greater entity. So are you, like, I, I guess I, the, it's probably a vocabulary problem, but most of our counseling agencies, for example, they're, they're peer reviewed by non-affiliated agencies. Do you okay. go through something like that? Uh, well, we, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by when you say peer reviewed. Uh, uh, like how well, that people who do what kind of what you do, only somewhere else come okay. and find out how you're supposed oh, And see to how we're doing as far as effectiveness mm -hmm. and what, you know, what the effectiveness of our methods and our programs are. It has a lot to do with safety. Uh, yeah, well, we certainly have our, when it comes to safety as they're working with kids, we have our plan to protect policies in place and all of those kinds of things. We are also, uh, we make our annual reports back to Youth for Christ Canada as well. And uh, within that, we have people that are overseeing us that are, from, that are in Vancouver. They oversee the other chapters of Youth for Christ in Comox and Greater Vancouver. So there's a lot of interaction between the leadership of our organizations and ours as well, just to make sure that we're all still on task and keeping close to what our mission is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Not seeing any uh, other questions? Sure. Thank you very much. Cool, thanks a lot, thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. The uh, last presentation uh, tonight is from um, the Vancouver Island Film and Media Commission. But I don't see Kathleen Gilbert here. Okay, so I guess that, uh, that wraps up our uh, presentations for tonight. Um, I guess, Andrea, we will, the next step is to work off our score sheet, yep. right? Yeah, the exciting part of the evening, the voting. So I will, um, perhaps we'll take five minutes just so we can um, stretch and perhaps, uh, you know, take a break before we get into it. So we'll be back at uh, about 20 after 7, thereabouts. kitchen put the Chinese food away because we die because we don't eat it. Yeah, no, I think it's behind that other one. Can you that one? Yeah. Who's not like eating food? Everyone knows who that sort of person is. Yeah. Because I've heard him say that's women's work. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not okay.
All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your patience. Uh, we, we went a little long, but um, our director of finance was getting a little bit of uh, uh, clarification and doing some research um, um, to help us along for tonight. So uh, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Cynthia. Thanks. Um, so w when we were, we were just discussing uh, what things are, uh, might be eligible for uh, gas tax, because if we could um, identify anything that would be eligible under the gas tax program, um, and in consultation with the Director of Finance, I think that the Colwood Elementary School uh, Sway Fund inclusive playground equipment could um, be eligible for funding under gas tax. So I would like to move that we um, forward that to our future budget deliberation uh, for the gas tax funds that we receive. Okay, so we uh, we do have a motion. We don't need a seconder because it's committee. But um, is there any discussion on that, Rob? Uh, yeah, thank you. I, I guess my only uh, thing is I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, I'm supportive of of that five thousand dollar grant either way, uh, because as uh, as I said uh, to some people before, I mean it's basically a thirty eight thousand dollar piece of equipment that's going to be able to be utilized within the municipality. Um, for five grand, so I want it to happen no matter what. So if it, if for some reason I don't want it to leave this table and then for some reason get lost at the grass tax, so uh, how do we ensure that one way or the other it definitely does? So when we bring forward this at budget, we will show it as probably um, a capital project within parks recreation budget, and we will show it as funded from gas tax. And in the event that it is not eligible, it would have to come out of our general revenue. But I understand that, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great, so we have a motion on the table. Any Just one more clarification. further discussion? Thank you. Uh, the other second thing is uh, 2.3, the Colwood Garden Society, does that also, was it discussed? Like could we add the two? Yes. Or are they different? So let's let's vote on this motion and then... Uh, then oh, it has to go, question. you want to go individually? Yeah. Okay, sorry, excuse me. That's okay. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, Rob, you uh, ask your question? Uh, or well, Cynthia? Like Cynthia already had okay. I, I, uh, I just, um, I, I reviewed the, the funding agreement uh, on the UBCM website and talked it over with the Director of Finance. And unfortunately, I can't see any way that that would be, although it seems to fit in my mind, um, according to the uh, hard words in black and white, I don't think that fits any of the gas tax gas tax categories. Um, so the only one that I did find was 2.2 as far as ones that would fit the gas tax category. Um, but there is also a number of things on our list which I just wanted to suggest um, that we should maybe um, forward to our budget deliberations to be included as line items because for the last many years, uh, we have been funding uh, all of these things uh, every year, including the um, dry grad, including um, the, now I'm not, the Fort Rod Hill, and including the, um, the Legion. Have I missed anything? Ones that we do every year. Arts Council? Yeah, and the Sorry, Arts Council. Yeah. So I think nice. all of those items should be um, included in our regular budget so that next year they don't have to come and apply all over again. Um, I mean, it's still subject to the will of council, but it, the only difference being that if we were to remove them from the budget, it would require a motion to remove them. So my motion is that those items are brought forward with the budget as line items. Andrea? May I just clarify for the minutes because I wasn't sure that I got the list, okay? So I'm looking at the items that you're proposing, um, Councillor Day, that would be removed from the regular annual grant application process and go to be coming line items under grant and aid. So what I heard you say was Fort Rod Hill at 2.16, um, the 
Royal Bay Secondary School dry grad at 2.19, the Royal Canadian Legion at 2.20, and what else? Um, and yeah. the, the Nayakti. Nayakti is in there now, yeah. yeah. Did I hear West Shore? I wasn't sure what the thinking was. West Shore, there was only oh, five. Two. Yep, West Shore Arts Council, yeah. Fort Rod Hill, Royal Bay, Secondary School, the Legion, and IACTI. Five. Oh, yep. I was thinking also, what about 2.9? Um, we do have a station in Colwood. It hasn't changed, uh, and we've been doing it every that's year. That is true. Yeah, yeah that's a good observation. So Bike to Work Thank Society you. would become a regular part of our grants every year. Yep, that's correct, a suggestion. Okay. So May I ask one further clarifying question of council? Because if we put that into the grant aid, like every year you set a budget, whether it's 30000 for clarity's sake this year. So these items would get preference. Is that my understanding? So that if those five items add up to ten thousand dollars or whatever, is your intention then that what's left over once you've established the budget of say twenty thousand dollars, then gets split between the remaining items? Yeah, that's Fair. and and we're uh, we I just want to further clarify that um, when we're making the, this motion that it's uh, on the two thousand and seven amount that's requested. Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen. Sorry, what did I say? Seven. Seven. 2017. Okay, so that's the amounts, okay. and and it's up to council now to determine if if you would like to grant the amount that's being asked, right? Right. Okay, so okay, we've got so uh, six items that um, uh, that are included in the mo motion to um, refer to the budget process to be included in as a regular line item. Any further discussion? No clear. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. All right, so um, 2.3, yeah, Cynthia? I would just like to uh, recommend that we fund out of the remaining grant funding the $5,000 for the Colwood Garden Society. Uh, and my reason for supporting this is because it's a one-time cost. It is a, a, a local um, group. Uh, and it's working in conjunction with the schools and with City Hall. Um, so I, I think it has a good chance of continuing to exist, uh, which is, would be, you know, it would be uh, difficult if, w if I wasn't knowing these organizations as well as I do, uh, that uh, it would continue to exist. Uh, and, that, and I would also recommend that this be a one-time grant. I'm just uh, just doing some addition here. Uh, okay, so we have a motion to include the five thousand dollar grant for uh, Colwood Garden Society. Any uh, discussion, Jason? Yes, if we're going to do this for each item, this will take all night. Uh, last year we had an expedited process for doing this. I can't recall exactly how it worked, but we prioritized and then. Uh, I. I think we went through each item yeah. and council did vote on it. That's why you had this score sheet. Basically each of you um, recommended what you thought. And, and many of the items, some of you didn't want to support at all, so. Yeah. We've actually eliminated a bunch already. Mm -hmm. Five. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, any further discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all those in, in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So that was 5,000 to yes. the Colwood Garden Society. Thank you. Um, Cynthia? I would move uh, $2,000 for uh, the Dialogue and Resolution Services Society. Okay. Uh, we have a motion, any discussion? Jason? I'll make one thing very clear. There are a number of these, a, a good number of these that I consider health, education, and welfare spending. It's not the city's purview to support health, education, and welfare. It's a provincial responsibility to keep me from doing this for every single one. Uh, <laughs> I will just say, say it on this one and then identify what I think is HEW down the line and my uh, 
vote on those will be zero for each one. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And I, I just will uh, uh, say that the $2,000 grant that's um, been uh, suggested was the same as 2016, just for folks aware. Thank you. And I just want to add that I have had presentations from Communica at the Victoria Family Court and Youth Justice Committee. Uh, I am satisfied that the services that they're offering are legitimate, helpful, and probably uh, actually saving us money in terms of helping to deal with uh, issues that are otherwise left to our RCMP to have to deal with. So. Uh, <laughs> It, it might be the province's responsibility, but you can pay now or you can pay later. Uh, motion on the floor, all those in favor? Opposed? One opposed, carried. Next one is the Creativity, uh, cre creatively United for the Planet Society. Um, not seeing, uh, oh, Jason? Yes, again, a number of these functions seem to be proposed three or four places, and my opinion are already covered under our Chamber of Commerce, our Economic Development Committees, mm -hmm. and our dir Director of Communications. So I would move that the, the Communica be given or sorry, not Communica, the Creativity <laughs> United for the Planet be uh, zero. Any discussion? Cynthia? I would have preferred, uh, I have on my sheet $1,000 because I think um, they are working with um, our community and um, they were uh, working in conjunction with our communications as well, um, who actually recommended them, um, I believe, to come forward. So um, I think we could help them with some of their costs associated with their volunteering, such as hosting their website. Okay. So at this point, the motion on the floor is to not support them at zero. So um, depending on where that goes. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. Cynthia? I'd move $1,000 for Creatively United for the Planet Society. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Next one is Crisis Intervention and Public Information Society. Last year we uh, gave them $1,000. Cynthia? I keep going first, but I want to get her done. So uh, I'll, I'll move $1,000 for the crisis intervention, same as last year. Any discussion? No. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried? Uh, next is Disabled Sailing Association of British Columbia. Jason? Yes, as I pointed out, I think they're providing a service to a number of residents of Colwood that uh, they would not be able to access in any other form. Uh, the funding seems to be just to help those of them that are financially uh, unable to pay for it themselves. Uh, so I would vote to uh, move that we supply them with their $2,000 request. We have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? Seeing, oh, uh, Cynthia? Sorry, um, I know they're a very valuable uh, program, but I was uh, had on my sheet a thousand dollars, so I won't be supporting this motion. I'd, I'd like to support them, but this is their first time. Mm -hmm. I think we could meet each other halfway. Any further discussion? No. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? <laughs> <laughs> it'll uh, it, it, it'll be defeated, but I, I'm willing to go uh, uh, halfway for sure. So since this is a new one thousand dollars, I'll I'll move a thousand dollars for the da <laughs> Disabled Sailing Association. Jason, um, <coughs> just to point out, uh, with all of the items approved so far, we've spent over half mm -hmm. of our funding. Yes, correct. Thank you. Right, any uh, further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? 
That's for a thousand, right? That's for a thousand. Yep. Uh, Gap Publishing. Their ask was for five thousand. Uh, Jason. Again, I see this as a function that's already covered multiple places in in our budget and the grant application. So I would move uh, no support. Any discussion, Cynthia? Um, it's funny because I've tr tried for years to um, look at ways to get a map, uh, a tourist map for the West Shore, uh, noting that we were completely invisible to most downtown locations. Um, but, uh, and I had hoped that this would be covered under the gas tax because they do cover tourism. Uh, so I, I guess I'm, I guess I'm just being overly hopeful. But I was hoping that that uh, the map might be covered under under the tourism section of the gas tax funding. But the director of finance did say that it needs to be infrastructure um, for gas tax. So mm -hmm. I, it may not qualify. But maybe we could find a way for <laughs> clarification. I don't know. So the motion is not to support the uh, the grant. Uh, if there's any further discussion, all those in favor? Opposed? Uh, it's carried. Uh, green teams of Greater Victoria. You already ag you agreed at fifteen hundred on yeah. this, right? Okay. We did. Oh, yes. Sorry. Green team? No, no, no. The Greater Victoria. Bike to, to work. work. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. We're, yeah we've Green teams of Greater Victoria? Uh, Jason? Yes, I would say that the, the green team has provided hundreds, if not thousands, of hours of uh, work in Colwood over the last year, including Pitt Park, Havenwood Park, uh, Bee Creek. They helped a lot on uh, <coughs> transplanting and rescuing uh, plants from the construction there. So I think. I would support the full amount of, of forty-eight hundred dollars. I think we get a lot of bang for that for that money. Cynthia, can I just ask where we are with our yeah. what, numbers? Uh, you're you're spending quickly. Ten, <laughs> eleven, five, sixteen, five, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. You're at twenty-one thousand two hundred. So you've only got seven or eight thousand dollars left. Yeah. Just a reminder. And we. Uh, and that's before we do the green teams at 4,800? That's correct. Yeah. Well, we have to see what our motion is. We'll move that. You have, uh, did you have a point of information, uh, Councillor Martin? I have a point of information. <laughs> <laughs> you have any point? I have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to share my opinion at some point. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's deal with this motion that's on the floor. Okay. I love shutting them down. Uh, <laughs> So the motion was to uh, fund the green team at forty-eight hundred dollars. Uh, any discussion on this item? <laughs> no. Uh, Lilha. Thank you, through the chair. Um, while I am supportive of the group, I'm I'm not going to be supporting this motion um, just because uh, we have a few groups um, with similar visions, and we also do have uh, an invasive species budget for parks. I believe it's about 28,000. Um, so these are kind of stepping in that line. So I, I, I think 2,000 is good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Cynthia? Despite the fact that my picture was in the presentation, <laughs> I, I have to um, agree with, I, I think they do great work. And uh, I think from so many different perspectives, uh, and I do really want to support them, uh, but I think because of our limited budgets, I, I agree that I can't support the full amount. I would like to speak specifically on this topic. Councillor Martin. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll actually support it, and the reason I'm going to support it is because uh, as Councillor, uh, I don't want to repeat Councillor Nolt's uh, comments, but basically the value you were getting from the, the amount of hours. Um, if we were to actually pay for staff to be doing all the uh, reclamation work that they're doing on behalf of the city of Colwood, we would certainly be paying more than $4,800. So I think it, it's cash smart to actually be supporting this organization versus um, saying that we, we actually have other programs that are 
uh, that could step in its place. I, I think we can run both programs and, and we would still need to get broom and other things taken care of in this community. Yeah, Jason. A comment, we did spend, I believe, our entire invasive species budget on uh, milkweed thistle. Uh, we didn't, the public works did not touch broom or ivy or Daphne or <laughs> I can name about six other blackberries, uh, whereas the green team got rid of all of them. So I, I really believe they deserve our full level of support. Yeah, and I, I would concur with that, and I, I would say probably the same for hat. You know, value for money, the return on investment is, is huge. Um, so even if we had to look at, you know, adjusting whatever our, our grant budget is to, you know, to accommodate stuff, you know, <laughs> I, I'm okay because I think it saves the taxpayer at the end of the day, you know, a few bucks. So anyways, I, I will be supporting. Um, so the motion's on the floor. Rob's spoken. Uh, <laughs> For for forty eight hundred dollars. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Forty eight hundred. I'll move uh, Habitat <laughs> Acquisition Trust for the full amount. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Full amount. Or do we have to call the medics, uh, Andrea? Or yeah, yeah okay? I'm hyperventilating yeah, okay. over here. <laughs> Okay, the next one is uh, Stigma Free Society, uh, formerly the Bipolar Society. Their ask is 2500 and we have not given to them, although they presented in the past. Um, Cynthia? Just wondering where our numbers are at now. I think we've spent it all. Just give me a sec here. Okay. You're doing a good job of spending this evening. I know. Short that. order. I think we're at 30,000. Maybe I've got my wish list of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've done the numbers so many times myself. Um, uh, it's so I'll go hard. Uh, yep. Thank you. Uh, 30,000 so far. Uh, I will. I would like to say two things, and I'm going to say one thing generally. I am not certainly tying myself to this budget of us trying to keep to 34,000 or whatever the dollar amount was. I think we can definitely, uh, if we think there's worthy <coughs> projects, I think we can definitely find within the budget to uh, to trim somewhere else. I'm not. I, I do not feel the necessity to to be nickel and diming, especially uh, uh, some of the things that this council's approved recently. That I think we can definitely not have to worry about $500 here or there for, for worthy projects. Uh, on the Sigma Free Society, I I'm, I'm, will mo move the motion of 2500 and uh, the rationale being I actually, uh, this is a something that's dear to my heart. Uh, I have a nephew who is bipolar and I have actually uh, firsthand experienced uh, when there isn't the educational system in place to educate the general population on on how uh, bipolar affects not only the individual but the community around it, uh, it, it has a dramatic effect. So I think it's a very worthwhile. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor for 2,500 bucks. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? <laughs> oh. Okay, all, all those in favor of the $2,500? Opposed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm willing to split the difference huh. because this is, uh, this is also a new, to someone we haven't granted. By that, do you mean a lower amount? Yeah, $1,250. I, I, I would so move $1,250 for bipolar faith, or stigma-free society. They were the Sorry, they were bipolar They were bipolar babe, babe yeah. And, and by the way, they also have a very good reputation. Yes, they do. Okay. Any uh, discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried for 1250. Opposed? Uh, West Shore Arts Council, we've um, dealt with already. Uh, Youth for Christ Victoria, their ask is $5,000, and we have not uh, granted them anything in the past. Um, Cynthia? I would move that we um, support them for a thousand dollars. 
Any uh, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried for 1,000. Uh, big brothers, big sisters of Victoria, uh, their ask was 3,000. Last year we uh, granted them two. Uh, Cynthia? I would move that we support them with $2,000, the same as last year. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried for $2,000. I have a question, um, if I may. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to clarify, so council does not want that to be on a line item, because big brothers, big sisters, Correct. are we, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Greater Victoria Volunteer Society, uh, the grant is for $1,000, same as uh, we offered last year. Cynthia? I'd like to move the $1,000 and um, just would like to, to ask committee if they would consider moving this to the, the line item. We have supported them uh, every year. They do really help coordinate a lot of um, the volunteer activities of all the volunteer groups within Victoria. Um, and it's been supported at the same amount for many years in a row. So the, the motion would be to support them at $1,000 and include them um, in the uh, core budget grants. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried for 1,000 and, and transferred over to the, to the core. Uh, oh, uh, Island uh, Sexual Health Society, the ask was 2,000 and last year we had not uh, granted them anything. Cynthia? I'd like to move that we support them for $1,000 and the reason for my making that motion is that the Island Sexual Health Society um, attends our, our high schools. They assist with uh, planned parenthood, um, educate, sexual education. Uh, they really are a resource to all of the youth in their communities, and it doesn't matter at all that their main offices are in Saanich. Um, they're still doing outreach, and they're at our clinics, and they're helping our kids. Okay. Any discussion? Sorry, just give me 30 seconds. Let me start the timer for you. Sure, let me get the timer. And, and maybe, sorry, uh, through the chair to Andrea. Andrea, do you have anything that you can add regarding that specific, uh, since they didn't come and do a presentation uh, while I'm looking? Uh, Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, Cynthia has made sure she's not doing something. Uh, I know that they offer um, their services uh, in, a, in a medical clinic setting, uh, as well as within the high schools and at, at the Belmont Youth Clinic, for example, and they offer reduced price, uh, affordable contraception, et cetera. I think they do have uh, some other. Um, yeah, Loha. Thank you, through the chair. I just wanted to also add that this one, in, um, sorry, the one in Royal Bay in particular is for students um, exclusively. So it, it's a venue where they feel safe and comfortable um, coming to get, you know, uh, contraceptives or um, sexual health advice or help. Um, a lot of youth feel embarrassed to seek help from their family physician or their parents. So I really do feel that this provides um, a, a good service for our youth. Thank you. Can you remind me, what was the motion? Uh, the motion was $1,000. Okay. Which is All right, which you, is can call, you can call the course. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried for $1,000. And the last one we need to consider is the Vancouver Island Film and Media Commission. Their ask is uh, 3000 Last year that we approved 1000 uh, Cynthia, you want your name in a minute. So I just <laughs> want to get this meeting done. <laughs> so, so I'm moving uh, that we support them with $1,000, the same as last year. <laughs> All right, uh, 1000 bucks, Rob. Thank you. I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm going to support them for more than that. Uh, so I'll vote against this just because I would probably be making a motion to support them for two. Part of the reason being that uh, there was even the, uh, a story in the paper this week and where it was they had, I think, close to 1,600 
participants wanting to come and get information about working within the film industry. Um, so it obviously it's a very big demand within our um, communities that, that people actually do want to participate in that. And I, I, I certainly am encouraging, and I think they've done a fantastic job of trying to uh, foster that. So I actually am supportive of them increasing their funding from last year. Thank you. I, ju I just would like to provide my rationale for not increasing their uh, support from last year. Uh, I want to continue to keep the lights on and the phones answered, um, but I also recognize that we do a lot of other things to support them. So, you know, the, the permitting, the fire department, um, making sure everything's going to work when they're filming at Royal Roads or Esquimalt Lagoon. We do a lot of things to go out of our way to support them that do take um, city staff time and resources. So um, that's why I'm, I'm committed to keeping it the same as last year. I would suggest that uh, since there's a dollar amount attached to this, that if there was um, a, a difference, uh, then you can make an amendment that we would vote on. And then uh, depending on what happens there, we would revert to the main motion. Um, so is there an, an amendment to the $1,000 that... Uh, uh, sure, I'm happy to make? certainly uh, get it on the table. An and you don't, okay, you want me to amend it to two and then... It yeah. Rather than voting the one thousand down, okay, I'll make the amendment. I'll make the suggestion that it's amended to two thousand. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, the amendment's defeated. On the main motion of a thousand dollars. Any? Kiss any vote that you ever want to buy, fella. <laughs> 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 well. <laughs> Well, and I will say I don't. It's not necessarily that I disagree. It's that I there are other services that we do provide in kind as well. Um, uh, uh, you know, so I, I I I do appreciate where you're coming from, and but um, I so that's the half medium. The, uh, so, okay, on the main motion. Thank you. Uh, I disagree, uh, and the reason I disagree is is yes, we provide additional uh, support, but we also uh, earn additional income. So, for example, when Volvo shot their three days down on, on Lagoon. Um, that was actually a cash positive situation for the city, not a cash negative situation. Great. Bilha? Um, I'm gonna be supporting the $1,000 obviously, but um, I guess just my two cents uh, why I wanted 2,000 as well is because um, the industry is growing. We are seeing more film productions coming over here and we also do benefit from the the um, spending spin-off from people coming from different places and staying here for that. And that's all, thank you. Thank you. Excellent point. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor of the $1,000? Opposed? It's carried. Yep. That, uh, that's it. Just one clarifying oh, question there, oh, on IACTI. Did you want to, because right now it's in at 1,200, did you want to award it a bit of an increase as discussed at the start of the meeting? Go ahead and bring that up. Cynthia. <laughs> I'd like to move that uh, the grant for IACD be increased to $1,300 and that it be included as a line item in the budget as well. Uh, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. yeah that is. Sorry. Yeah, but you want to I forgot to include it. That's okay. So is there any opposition uh, or... Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Um, Andrea, did you want to <laughs> give us an uh, update on that uh, ask from the Juan de Fuca? Um, the question's been raised about that one. The update on the ask from the Juan de Fuca, <coughs> yes. So um, $50,000. So fifty thousand dollars, Cynthia, was granted to the Seniors Wanda Fuca Center back in 2013. I think it hit the 2014 budget year for a bus. Council passed a motion that that was a big ask, and that they were not going to entertain any further grants for a five-year period. So that's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. So I see they did ask for a kitchen replacement for fifty thousand dollars and. Based on what we could determine as staff in the council motion from then, this is not eligible. We did check with the mayor, but let me know if I'm wrong. Right on. I, yeah. Jason? 
I'd just like to comment on that uh, application. I, I reviewed it in the, uh, at the binder, and it's $50,000 of uh, $90,000 costs, and nobody apparently is being asked for any money except Colwood. Now, Juan de Fuca Seniors serves all of the Juan de Fuca recreational area and a whole bunch of other communities as well. So uh, that Colwood would be asked to forward 50000 and nobody else a penny rather troubles me. Fair enough. Um, well, great work, everyone. I think uh, that's probably the most, uh, the most that we've touched, folks, uh, since I've been around uh, on council. That's, that was pretty impressive. And so that was a heck of a lot of work that, uh, that's been done in two, uh, two and a half hours. So, so uh, next, oh, sorry. Would, uh, you, would you like the grand total? Yes, uh, this is what you pay me to do. Keep and score. $37,350. So holy that? smokes, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> considering actually we did very well <laughs> excellent excellent right. work um next uh next meeting is scheduled for february the 20th same time same place mm -hmm. um if there's nothing else can i have a motion to adjourn mm -hmm. all those in favor opposed carried thank you very much